and welcome again to North Central Journal. I'm Scott May. And joining us for our show this month are a couple of folks who uh, you probably remember from past programs. Event co-chair Marsha Sharkey and event leadership team member Sandy Long of the Greater Gardner Relay for Life, which is coming up again. This is the 30th anniversary of the Greater okay. Gardner Relay for Life. You're right. And Marsha, have you been associated with the relay for the entire time or most of it? No, right? most of the time. Yeah. yeah. We, I started, I think it was 1997 with, with Mickey. And then since then, yeah, and it, the relay started in 19, um, 1994. So you mentioned yeah. Mickey. That's uh, Mickey Nussie, who that's is Mickey uh, Nussie. <laughs> uh, camera shy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we uh, started uh, the uh, uh, Rays of Hope team, yes. right? And it was yeah. teachers from the Westminster, Westminster Elementary School and other employees and right. uh, kind right. of grew out from there. It sure did. Sandy, yeah. it's good to see you again as it's well. Nice I know you've you. been uh, keeping busy with the relay with uh, uh, the leadership team. And I, I wanted to ask you, uh, Marsha, because I don't th think people realize, you know, the, the relay happens annually, but the leadership team uh, keeps going pretty much year round, doesn't we it? We have not stopped. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. I mean, I think we took July off. We had the month of July, but then we started again. So we haven't stopped because we meet every month. And there's so much to plan behind the scenes as far as not only the dates and the themes and the confirmation of different things you need at Relay and vendors and activities, and yeah. it's every month. So we have not stopped. Now, tell us about some of the uh, special plans for the celebration of the 30th. What do you have going on this year? Um, our theme, of course, is celebrate 30 years of magic of Relay. So um, we have... We're starting more things now, but as far as um, celebrating 30 years, I'm personally inviting um, past co-chairs and chairs and ACS staff partners, and we hope to have you know more people there. And we're still in the process of planning all the different activities yeah. with entertainment and everything. But yeah, and still in the process of kind of the COVID downtime when it was a drive-by, you really couldn't uh, relay the way you have in the past, and it's the effort to build it back up to what it was yes. prior to uh, COVID, and, and that's still undergoing. Un yes, underway, yes. Right? And yeah. last year was like, I, we called it our stepping stone year to get us back yeah. after having the two years that we, we didn't have a live event. So this was, this was going to be good, and this is bigger and better than last year. And Sandy, you've got a pretty good-sized hat to wear, <laughs> along with being a member of the leadership team. Publicity is... Uh, um, pretty much your responsibility. There must yeah. be a lot to do there, it's, too. Um, it's growing, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, it, it's kind of difficult because uh, so much is done on social media now. Sure. And um, a lot of our elderly relayers and survivors, they don't, they're not as involved in social media as, as the younger generation. And, uh, but you know, you try to get through to the through the newspapers, and uh, thank God we have you and uh, LA TV and Gardner TV, so we can go on to those shows. Sure. And the uh, the uh, the older generation watches those, so that's good. You know, but I'll, I'll never forget how I first started with um, with publicity. Uh, I had gone to my first meeting, and. Um, I had never heard of this. I live in Lemonster, and I had never heard of the relay. I didn't know anything about it, and I thought, well, you know, I got to get it out there. So I tried sending things to the papers, and, and they weren't getting on there, or, you know, I called them and say, could you send a reporter? No, they wouldn't do that. So they had the Fitchburg uh, Sentinel had a little, uh, like, pilot office down in Lemonster on a street corner. Uh -huh. So one day, I had written up a story and I'm looking at that, and I, could, I stood outside that office for, it was a good hour, I think, waiting for somebody to come in and open the door <laughs> to take that story so they would publish it. And I, that's how it started. And uh, so I do the, you know, do the publicity with uh, um, Steve, uh, Steve Wendell up in Gardner. WGAW is, yep. is a wonderful host for us in Gardner. Yep. And uh, that's how it all started. You know, I was just going to be a kind of a <laughs> run around a relay, and uh, if once you get involved with relay, you can't you can't get out. Can't get out. <laughs> we always we always once you're in, them, you're yeah. in, huh? <laughs> Now, like the town purple is a, a huge annual event leading up to the relay. Tell us about yes. that and what communities are involved in these events. 
it, it was when I first started, so it's about 12 or 13 years ago, um, one of the uh, uh, members of the vet leadership team went into uh, Mayor Hawk at the time and said um, she wanted to make the city more aware of Relay. And so Light the Town Purple and Gardner, started by Carla Roy and Mayor Nicholson, uh, uh, not Nicholson, uh, Hawk, uh, Mayor, Mayor Hawk, Hawk yeah, yeah um, became our starting point. And then, again, I was like, oh, I really want Lemonster to be more involved and everything. So I <laughs> walked into Mayor Mazzarella's office one day and I said, um, could we perhaps light City Hall purple for relay? And, you know, this little old lady walks in there and, huh, what are you talking about? <laughs> so he, uh, he said, oh, sure. So um, one of the other members and I put what we thought were purple lights in City Hall. <laughs> and uh, you couldn't find purple light bulbs at the time, so we put little caps on them, theater things. Oh, yeah. And when they lit the lights, they were red. <laughs> so City Hall was lit up with red lights. Um, but that eventually grew into something very, very special. The second year we did it, he, his staff painted an old fire truck for us, which is still around. We still bring it to yep. different events and everything. They painted a fire truck purple. Uh, the next year it was a police car that was painted purple. They painted a trolley purple. They've, mm -hmm. uh, they've evolved it over the years. And um, this year he says he wants to do something really special for our 30th. He's, he's, he's funny. Well, it's interesting you bring up Mayor Mazzarella because we had an opportunity to interview him um, in February for North Central Journal. And uh, part of that discussion had to do with the Relay for Life. And I wanted mm -hmm. both of you to see what he had to say. So oh, let's take a look oh. at that. This year, the uh, Greater Gardner Relay for Life is going to celebrate their 30th, Imagine that. 30th year. And I know you've become... Uh, a big supporter. Yes. I know you were at the opening ceremonies uh, this I past the, year. I, I was the, like the, the good torch, guy, yeah. lighting the torch at the yeah. Olympics. Um, uh, my wife and I have been involved in the relay for many years, and I just want to ask you of your uh, about your decision to uh, show yeah. more support and get involved in that. I, I, I don't think there's a group. I mean, there are a lot of groups, but there's just something about this group of people. <laughs> I mean, third largest fundraisers in the country. Yeah. We're talking Lemister Fitchburg Gardner. This is not known as, you know, communities of wealth where, you know, there's like, you know, millionaires alley where people yeah. are just writing <laughs> checks to make this happen. Yet yeah. these people do remarkable work and it's known all over. And all of the money that they raise goes back to every penny, goes back to, to research. And there's something special in these the volunteers that work, raise this money. There's something special in their heart. Either they've been impacted by it, or they're caregivers, or somebody in their family. But the spirit that they have is just like, like it, it's, it's hard to explain. It's, I, I don't think you could take the spirit that goes on with this group and replicate it anywhere else. Like if somebody called and said, how does this really for life do this? I don't think there's anybody that can explain it to them. I think it's something you've got to see it and feel it. Yeah. And, uh, and I mean, the survivors walk. I mean, there's nothing more touching to see. And, and the group is getting bigger every year, which means early detection, people mm -hmm. going for their screenings, means we're saving a whole, a whole lot of media, technology. And then the biggest thing is the money that is raised is going back for research, which at the end of the, so when they do the, you know, the walk, the survivor's walk, there's more people at the survivor's walk. Yeah. So, I mean, how can't you support an effort like that? It's just like, hey, what do you need me to do? You know, I won't do the dunking booth, but anything else I'll do for you. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Thank you. So it's uh, very special to Mayor Mazzarella, and uh, of course he's become more and more involved as uh, time has gone on. And I wanted to ask you both how important it is for that kind of community support for the relay. How important is that? Oh, it's so important. Um, we couldn't do it without the communities. Yeah. We couldn't do it without the support of the mayors um, or anybody, that, even the businesses that are in the towns and the cities. We couldn't do it. We can't, we can't forget Westminster's Light the Town Purple. Exactly. Too. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes, I was thinking yeah, about that. that. Was, yeah. <laughs> that's Marsha's baby. Yeah. <laughs> Another base there that I wanted to bring up, and that is not only the community support, but 
supportive businesses as yes. well, and yes. uh, well, also a key to the relay. One of let's, the, let's call out some of those businesses. Yeah. One, yeah. Of, one of the main things that, um, while we do have some businesses that help, and, and uh, places like Hannaford, Workers Credit Union, we couldn't be doing this without Mount Wachusett Community College. Uh, we just couldn't hold a relay. There's yeah. no place big enough. Yeah. Um, some of the other ones, uh, Slattery's uh, helps with the Survivor Dinner. Uh, Gardner Ale House helps with the Survivor Dinner. Um, we have Faith this, Lutheran Church doing the Survivor Dinner up there. And also, we're part of the North Central Chamber of Commerce now. So that, this is, oh yeah. this that is, happened this year, yes, yeah. so that's, we're very yeah. grateful for. Because yeah. one, of, one of the things with our relay, and the mayor touched on to it a little bit, is the fact that we do all of this without um, corporate sponsorships, per se. Mm -hmm. Like, you get the the large relays like Bakersfield, California, and uh, down in jo uh, Georgia, I think it is, Georgia, yeah. yeah. Um, they have corporate sponsors that give them $10,000, $100,000, you know, to do relay. This is all a grassroots thing, people going out and d uh, putting on uh, all kinds of different fundraisers and things and, and flower sales. Flower sales. Oh, the flower sales are fantastic. I still have There's my flowers. From, yeah, I still have my flower from last year, and usually I kill them within two days. You know, so no, he's a great. Um, you know, so all of this money, and even during the pandemic, when we couldn't do all of these things. We raised over $200,000. That says something about this community, the Greater Gardner area, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, the, and the absolutely wonderful people. So we, we need everybody. You know, the leadership committee is one thing, and, and we're great. I'm going to say it, we're great. <laughs> we do a lot of work all year long, but we yep. couldn't do it without all of the rest of them taking our lead and bringing back, you know? And recently, I, I just tried to find out how many communities we involve because we are the greater yep. garden area. Sure. And our ACS staff partner, Gina Bettetti, sent me the list and there's like 50 communities that are part of us from no New kidding. Hampshire wow. to, um, yeah, there's, it's it's huge. I mean, like one from here, one from there, but it was a community that was represented. And yeah, yeah so we had 50. We want to paint a picture for the folks watching this of the relay event itself and some of the, some of the important events that are scheduled throughout the course mm -hmm. of the relay, which, by the way, I don't know if we've mentioned, um, Friday, June 9th, and Saturday, June 10th are the relay dates this year. It kicks off at 6 o'clock Friday night, although there is a survivor's luncheon prior to that Correct. at the relay location at Mount Wachusett Community College. Um, but I wanted to talk about those events when the relay starts at 6 o'clock and some of the highlights going through time. Let's start with the beginning of the relay. What are people expecting to see? Um, like you said, the survivor ceremony starts at 3.30 yeah. on that Friday. And it's a reception that is, it's just refreshments, entertainment, um, bonding. You know, it's, it's a great time there. And Six, as the mayor points out, it grows every year grows in every numbers. Year. Yeah. And then 6 o'clock starts the opening ceremony, which, again, will be starting with the torch run of the high schools. Um, the track teams of the high schools will be running in. Um, with the torch to light, like Mayor Mazzarella had said he was the torch lighter. So um, that starts the relay opening ceremonies with a few speakers, and then we have a special moment with the survivors that Sandy always does um, with the celebration lap. And then the survivors start their lap at 6 o'clock. So, and after that, um, we have entertainment every single hour, and then 9 p.m. is the luminaria ceremony. Now, the celebration lap with the survivors, that's the celebration part of our relay, and then we remember at 9 o'clock with the luminaria ceremony. And where that we, lap is called the lap of hope? La, yes. The lap and, of hope. And then we um, light luminaria bags around the track that stay lit throughout the night. And what do those bags represent? The, those are, are people that either have lost their battle uh, or loved ones that are fighting. Uh, they're $10. You can get them at Relay or you can get them prior to by um, seeing any of the event leaders or uh, contacting Cheryl Bossy, who's the other event co-chair. And it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful ceremony that um, it, it, the, the first Relay I went to and I walked that lap, um, I, I could feel my mother with me. And, and I think a lot of people feel that way, that yeah. they're, you know, it, it, it can be sad, but, but it, all of Relay brings hope. You know, you, you think you're going up, oh, it's cancer, blah. But for some reason, 
all of the people there, either the survivors or the caregivers, exude hope, you know, and, and it's, it's something very, very special. If you, if you go, you're, you're hooked. It's yeah, the luminary event is, is uh, breathtaking, it's emotional. Of course, the sun has gone down, it's dark, and all you have are just bags lining the track representing people who are fighting the fight or those maybe that we have lost as family members. Um, but it is quite, uh, well, quite breathtaking. It yeah. is, it is, it's a beautiful ceremony. Sure is. And, and we do a silent lap too, which is a beautiful reflection after that ceremony. And then we start again, and then we have entertainment through the, um, we have silent um, hours from 12 to 6, but we're still walking on that track and relaying. And yeah. then at um, 9 a.m., we start the caregivers. Um, and as a survivor, I could not have been here without my caregivers. So caregivers are recognized that with the reception between 9 and 11 on Saturday morning. And then 10 o'clock is, is the caregiver um, like a small ceremony also with the caregiver lap. Mm -hmm. And then at um, one o'clock we'll start our closing ceremony and we're done at 2 p.m. on Saturday. And our, you mentioned entertainment. Yes. Um, anything special there this year? We Wanda? have a, one of our DJs has a band so he's coming back. Uh -huh. um, we have our old DJs who promise that they're coming back. So I'm just gonna leave that as a little surprise and come to Relay and see what we have, so. And one of those uh, old uh, DJs, uh, and one of the uh, voices of the relay for many years is Ben Parker, yes. who folks know from WPKZ Radio and now WBZ in Boston, mm -hmm. and uh, he's a local guy, and yeah. Ben's been involved with the relay for many years as well. So, Very supportive. And yeah. he's, he's, he's back around and back into it, and that's yes, great. Yes, yes. It's good. Yes. Um, how many teams do you have lined up registered for this year's relay? I checked this morning. Check and your notes. I know. Check my <laughs> notes. And we thought we 63 teams we have right now, so which has gone up like two teams from the other day. So we have people registering, um, and then we have uh, 343 participants right now. Survivors are 102, and our income is up too. So everything has increased since last year. So we are thrilled. Now the mayor alluded to this, but I want to go back around to the percentage of money that is raised, how much of that goes back to research to the American Cancer Society for research and, and things of that nature? Every, out of every dollar, 75 cents goes back to research and patient care. Um, and that's one of the highest percentages in any of the uh, charities around, you know, so make sure when you're, um, donating to a charity, you know how much goes back to the charity itself and how much goes into the CEO's pocket. Sure. But with the Cancer Society, most of it does go back to research and uh, uh, research grants. And there have been uh, hundreds and hundreds of grants in this area alone for uh, doctors to research cancer and, and things like immunotherapy uh, have come out from, of that. And, uh, and if, if the doctors, when the, as they're doing research, if it doesn't help, if it doesn't do anything for cancer research, they share it with the other uh, diseases like heart disease or um, my little great granddaughter has what they call Rett syndrome. And some of the things that have been um, found out like with cancer research can be applied uh, and looked at for this disease. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it, it's it, it's money not wasted, obviously, and there are so many uh, patient care services that uh, when my mother had cancer back in uh, '85, I think it was, she, um, I didn't know of any of these things, and I would wake up at three o'clock in the morning, and I'm going, oh my gosh, how am I going to get her to her, her, her treatment? How am I going to do this? And um, there's something called Road to Recovery, and you call. Uh, you can call the 800 number, which we'll get to, and uh, they can t set you up with uh, people who are able to give you rides to all of your treatments. Burbank Hospital, the, with the uh, cancer center up there, mm -hmm. amazing, amazing place. Right. And uh, the, the uh, Cancer Society obviously helps out up there, and so many others. So, uh, so it's the, not just research, it's like right. money goes to other things too, Hope Lodges and 
and a lot of it comes back to New England because of the beautiful facilities and medical facilities sure. we have in this yes. area. So yeah. a lot yes. of that money does come back. But Hope Lodges is another big thing that, um, yeah, I wish I knew about the 1-800 number when I had cancer because when you're awake at 3 a.m. crying, it would be nice to have somebody to talk to. Well, uh, on that note, on a personal note, Marcia, we'll start with you. What does the relay mean to you personally? I started to relay with Mickey and my sister um, in memory of our dads. So that's when I started it. So that was my remembering and raising money to find cures. And believe it or not, there's a cure for my dad's cancer to this day because of the research. And then in 1998, I was diagnosed with um, breast cancer with a routine mammogram. Mammogram was founded by ACS Research. So this is another reason I need to say thank you. So, um, I do, and I had experimental treatment, so that's another reason. So that's my celebrating there. And then um, now my sister passed away in 2007 from metastatic breast cancer. So I relay for um, remembering her, and there are treatments for her type of a cancer now. So relay is a huge support system for me with the celebrating and remembering and everything and the healing, walking in the survival lap with those survivors holding their hands. It's a healing moment. It's a hope moment. Um, walking in the caregiver lap, I'm saying thank you. So it's a lot. It's, it's, it's a lot of um, reflection and looking at true heroes and supporters, and I couldn't do it without them, and I will continue doing Relay for as long as I can. And Sandy, how about you? Uh, I had lost my job at Simon's, and I was like at ends. I didn't know what I was going to do. And someone told me to go up and see Relay. And um, I, had, I had lost my mother to cancer and a couple of aunts, but I didn't think of it that much, I guess. I didn't, you know, I wasn't, but I went to Relay and I went up there about 3.30 in the afternoon mm -hmm. and I, I was just overwhelmed. I thought, oh my gosh, look at all these people, you know, that was at the time when we had like 500 survivors walking in the lap and we had tents all over. Yeah. And people greeted me like they knew me, and I think nobody <laughs> knows me here, you know what? So, so I, I started helping out selling some tickets. The next thing I know, I said, I want to be on the committee, and they all said, Yeah, okay. That, everybody says that after relay, right? Well, I showed up, and I, I, I can't. Every time I think, I, because I am getting on, along in age, and things are starting to break down, and there's no <laughs> spare parts around, so I'm thinking, you know, I, I really need to give this up, and I, I'll see somebody, and I'll be able to tell my elevator speech, and I'll and I'll think about my mom, and it, it's just. I just get passionate about it, and I and I want to and I want to do more, and I want to be better, and I want to raise more money, you know, and and so, you know, I I do it for my mom, but I also do it thinking, I, I couldn't help my mother. It, 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 by the time she was diagnosed the second time, it had progressed to her um, spleen and throughout her body, and she was diagnosed on March 17th and died March 31st. So that's how fast it had progressed. I couldn't help her, but if I can help one person become aware of the 800 number, of the rides, of the Hope Lodge, I feel like I've done something, you know? And there's always that one person, when I get to the point where I'm not gonna do this anymore, that one person will show up. And I'm back in, pulled back in again. <laughs> Let's talk about before we give people information, the 800 number and other things like that, let's talk about the volunteers. Your team, your leadership team, people like Sandy, Marsha, people who keep coming back year after year with that passion. Uh, talk about those folks, your team. My, my team, oh my goodness. Um, my team was started with a bunch of teachers and support, and it was, then they were my support system when I was diagnosed. Um, and then my sister branched off with my church team, um, and they're still going to this day. It, I can't explain the support system. It's, it's, and we're all volunteers. We're not being paid for this. Mm -hmm. um, there's something about really, like the mayor de <laughs> dean said, there's something about the group of people. We're not a rich community, and you just put out relay. And I think it's because everybody's been touched by it one way or the other. You know somebody, or you have it, or you've, you've done the treatments. I mean, that's the thing with American Cancer Society, too, is the education they put out there. 
with now the colonoscopy age is less because of the age of being diagnosed is less. Right. So that's that's the huge part too is is the message to get out there is we can prevent a lot of our cancers too. So we have uh, this show will be running through the month of May as we approach the relay uh, June 9th and 10th. Um, we have a luminary uh, service, uh, luminary events uh, coming up, light the town purple events coming up, which will include luminary. Um, where can people go to get information about the relay? Uh, maybe is there still time to put a team in? Oh, sure, there yeah. is, right until the day of relay. You okay. can have a team, you can come, you can register. Um, the website is www.relayforlife.org backslash G GTR, Greater Gardner Mass. So hopefully you can put that on the site and, and share that website because they can get all the information about our event there. And an 800 number? 800-ACS-2345. If you are a survivor and you've never gone to Relay or anything else, call that 800 number, option 4, and register as a survivor. You'll get a survivor t-shirt, which wear proudly. <laughs> and um, if you feel well enough, you can come up to the Survivor Walk, come to the, the Spaghetti Supper, get a hold of our, our Mickey, um, <laughs> who, by the way, is absolutely phenomenal behind the scenes. She, she doesn't want any recognition or anything, but uh, she's phenomenal. And um, Scott thinks so. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, um, call that 800 number. It, it, it's open 24-7, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and you will get a person. That's the main thing. If they don't know the answer, they can get the answer for you in a New York second. Have that number again? 800-ACS-2345. It's 800-227-2345 in case, you know. I want to thank you both for everything you've done for so many years. Congratulations on the 30th anniversary of the relay, and uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Oh, yes. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you so much, too.